our audio real quick. Hey, look at that. We are live. Check in audio. Bop, 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 bop. My hair looks awful. Hear Network error. Try again. I can hear you. Okay. There we go. Okay. Are you ready? Ready? Indeed. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to unknown time numbered episode because I forgot to check on the security podcast on the It 30 network. I want to say it's 243 or something like that. I'm just going to go with that number. It's my fault for not checking, but that's okay. Anyway, uh, we're still living the quarantine life. We're still, we are opening just a little bit, just a little taste of opening. I mean, I don't know what that means. Uh, hopefully you're still staying safe. Hopefully you got to enjoy your, your Memorial day. Anyway, let's say hi to Tom. Let's see what he's up to. Hello everyone. I, I am happy to report that, uh, here in my apartment, I have opened the windows a little bit. Uh, now I am on the fourth floor, so I'm still keeping socially distant if somebody gets within six feet of my fourth floor windows we have bigger problems i mean have you gone to making your own masks my wife has made her own masks are we there yet i have not i did uh buy some reusable cloth masks they are not cdc approved it actually said in big lettering this does not follow guidelines it's not guaranteed to do anything they look nice and might help you in like the two to five percent range all right, I don't leave anyway, and I don't really want to buy the nice masks because, you know, our healthcare workers need those more than I do because I'm just going to the grocery store. Like, once a month, I'm heading to the grocery store. I don't need something that's designed to protect somebody, like, in surgery, full-on pandemic mode. I just need something to protect me a, a little bit while I try to avoid people and kick them away while I'm trying to pick up my very essential cereal. So on cereals, of course, peanut butter crunch being the top, but what is your second favorite cereal? I'm a Honey Bunches of Oats guy. That's my right. number one. Uh, my kids swear by, obviously, Honey Nut Cheerios. They're good. Uh, my mother decided that Fruit Loops was the end-all, be-all of cereal to give little kids, which is not a good idea. Do not do that <laughs> to little kids. Um I do not go grocery shopping. My wife does that. She goes once every two weeks, and and we stay as socially distant as we can. Uh, she did make some masks. the The six year old was hesitant, but now he wears it. the The three year old's like, "This is my face. You're not touching it." So we still have some work to do. As far as the governor today said, July sixth is you can start having high school graduation. I don't know what that means. Uh, we don't know what that means either. There's a whole lot of union issues and other issues and a lot of other things to go on. But I, I feel bad for the seniors. I want them to experience this because they were waiting for it. But I think at this point, we just like if if the if the prom didn't happen, but we got back to normal. Like I'll take that any day. Like you didn't graduate, but let's just let's just go back to normal as whatever that means. So I actually would say. And people don't really, this is an unpopular opinion. I just think we should wear masks all the time. Like, I really think that we know no more shaking hands. I would love to never shake anybody else's hands. Oh, that'd hand. be so great. That'd I don't want so fist great. bumps. No fist bumps. No shaking hands. Just a no head nod. No weird, like, elbow thing. Yeah. No, just, like, either either completely steal the, the culture in Japan of, of bowing, because that's socially distant. It's great. It's respectful. I, I think it's... Wonderful. Uh, or we just, we go with the simple head nod or the slight head raise, just the. Yeah, look, I'm all it's about. Perfect. That's, that's what I'm looking for. I want something really simple because the shaking of the hands, the, 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 I guess the bro hug that people do, the, the, the kissing on the sides. I don't want any of that. Um, it's keep, keep your human contact to yourselves, please. And if we wash more hands, if we use hand sanitizer a little more, I think it will all be better. And look, I really want masks. I, I think that that if if you're gonna if you're in a crowded place, like 
every attendee at DEF CON should wear masks. If you're going to crowded place and you can wear masks, that's fine. Especially if you're sick, obviously that's when you exactly want to wear a mask. But that look, that's going to cut the infection rate down of everything. And let's be happy about that. I want that, but apparently people don't want that. I don't know. So uh, there's there's somebody on Twitter that was actually saying, hey, now that we've got masks, should we just lean into this like cyberpunk dystopia a little bit? The masks are like... Not only are they offering some protection against viruses and other infectious agents, but it also ruins facial recognition. Like, why aren't we leaning harder into this as security people? We should have masks on all the time. We should make masks with like QR codes or other like geometric patterns specifically designed to break artificial intelligence. This is a moment we've been waiting for. It's right here. Let's get on it. I don't have an announcement yet, <laughs> but... I know nothing, but I have an idea that that something may come up. One of uh, one of the this. one of the crypto people, one of the per- people who presented last year, does anti facial a- anti um, a uh, license plate technology. So we we plugged her on the show before. Advers- I think it's adversarialfashion.com where she makes these really they're, uh, they're hideous. They're they're really hideous shirts. But that's the exact job of them to to throw junk data into the machines and and go from there. But that's what I the first thing I was thinking. I I know that Apple released their iPhone uh, update to to stop Face ID from taking so long. I mean that that is one of the byproducts. But you know what? Take a picture of your face and put it there, and and then read or redo it if you wear masks all the time. Add another one with a mask. I think you can do that. So I just tried that actually. Uh, we've we've got. Um... There's a situation where I need to access my phone, but I also have to wear a mask because it's a public location. Um, and I couldn't configure a, I couldn't set up an alternate appearance uh, with the mask on. So I said, hey, too much of your face is covered. Um, so yeah, unless Apple changes something you know, soon, can't really do that if you're wearing your mask properly. Also, if you're in public, don't, don't, lift up the stupid mask or tear it down just to to show your face to your phone like come on just tap the thing a little bit and then punch in your passcode it's way easier so don't, i'm sending don't put you a me link. at risk like that i'm sending you a link about what i just explained and of course adversarial fashion has anti-license plate reader face masks for your pleasure this is beautiful so I think I, I might have to get some of these. I like that I do not consent to a search. <laughs> now, this is not a segue into our first story, but it kind of is. Some appellate court did rule that uh, that asking you to just staring at your lock screen violates your Fourth Amendment. I stopped at that headline. I didn't go past it because that is... I, I can't see that holding up in court past that that's going to be appealed and it's going to it, it it can't i mean staring at your lock screen is a violation of privacy i i don't know how i feel about that but then i see this do not consent to the search on the face mask and i'm like i i think this is awesome i uh yeah i'm, I'm thinking the license plate one is interesting although i don't get my face near license plate readers very often at least not that i know of so I think I might skip that one, but uh, even though it's not really, um, it's not really designed to you know fool anything. This uh, ALPR circuit looks really nice. Um, I just don't know if if it's got the hack potential for me. I think the consent to the search is the right one. Yeah, that that one is pretty great. Although it might get people the issue with text on clothing is that if you specifically want people to stay away, don't wear shirts with with text on it because people will like walk up and be like, "What does that say?" And they'll they'll keep getting oh, closer. Right. But what is what is? No, no, stop, stay, stay away, distance, distance. Yeah. Look, I hear you. So far away. Anyway, I I, I want the masks to stay in some capacity. I don't want it to be like the person doing something bad is wrong. I want whatever it is to be 
okay, masks are now, you're sick, you wear a mask. I, I think that's that's going to be the way it is. You wake up with something in your throat, but just put on the mask. People are not going to look at you funny because you know what? You're you're trying to protect them. And I do believe that we're trying to protect people anyway. So, so yes, we are socially distancing. Uh, I'm I'm happy to report that I'm still good. I I mean Tom is still there, so I'm assuming he is good. So I haven't left my apartment in three weeks. Three weeks ago, we went to a grocery store. We left uh, very quickly. I mean, I mean that, that's unfortunately the problem. We we do need to start moving around. I just wish that that more people are not itching to get out. So we're doing stupid things like we we see the yeah. headlines and everything else. Anyway. Um, the WhatsApp group, which you should absolutely join. It's been a little quiet because there's literally been no security news. Nothing has happened. Everyone is, I, I don't know why they're socially distancing in their basements, but I feel like the two stories are contact tracing and uh, problems with Zoom. And unfortunately, that's the two things we're going to talk about today. But the first one is contact tracing. So the WhatsApp group was asking about it. There's a really awesome security now that we will link to. And it's like an hour and 15 minutes in on an hour and a half episode where where Steve Gibson goes through and and talks about it. And I'm going to butcher it, but let's see what we can do. Basically, you're going to download an app, which... And we're going to talk about the problems. You're going to download an app. It's going to create some sort of hash to the ID or something unique to your phone. So we talk about web fingerprints. So that's the browser you use, the the specs of your computer. There's like 64 or whatever different signals. They're going to hash it in some way. They're saying 128 because you don't need 256. There's not that with 128 bit it's enough it's small enough everything else and then it's going to use bluetooth low energy so as you walk by you're going to be pinging all these other devices that have bluetooth low energy and there's only supposed to go five or ten feet and if you get it they will flip the switch that says you have it if somebody you know in that facility on your daily walk gets it your phone will ping you and say somebody in the last day or two uh, you were in contact with in some capacity. And from what I understand, that's that's pretty safe. I mean, the way Steve Gibson explained it is there's, I thought they did a good job. Now I'm talking to Tom and he's going to like rip it to shreds, but I thought it was a pretty good idea as far as, as thinking about the problem and how to solve it, not if it's secure. I, I think it's secure in the sense that you hash you hash a unique fingerprint. They don't know who you are. It, the Bluetooth low energy sends the beacons. If it's there, it flips red. No one else knows it because it's just a hash. I don't think they can reverse engineer it, but I'm going to let Tom rip me to shreds now. <laughs> so technologically speaking, there is a way to build this stuff in that does respect your privacy. Um, yeah, I want to say a year and a half ago, Apple came out with this this big text dump uh, about differential privacy, and they they basically said, "Yeah, we want the ability for all Apple device users, iPhones, iPads, whatever, if they walk across like your AirPods on a bench, they can detect that and say, oh, hey, here's Tom's AirPods.' Um, you know, they they were last seen at this location without giving away any information about you know." who found it, what they were walking past, and without even revealing to the person who found the thing um, whose device they found, or even if they themselves found it. So they could just walk around looking for lost things. Um, so technologically, absolutely possible. Unfortunately, this is something that doesn't have a clear cut, you know, tech software, big industry solution to it. Contact tracing has a lot of false positives and a lot of false negatives to it that we need to be aware of. The, the first biggest problem is how do you get people to install this thing? Sure, Google and Apple might put out an official app be like, yep, this is your, your one and only, so I smacked the microphone, your one and only contact tracing application. Uh, go and install it right now. Well, how many of you listening would install it? I wouldn't. I have no reason to install it. I don't leave my apartment. Hardly ever. Uh, and now, now with grocery delivery, I'm not ever going to leave my apartment. I never get within six feet of any person except for my wife, who also doesn't leave the apartment. Um, so the, the app wouldn't do me any good, and it's just yet another thing that's draining my battery, so of course I'm not going to install it. You know, If you have older relatives, are they going to hear about it? Are they going to install it? Do they even know what it does or how it works or anything like that? No, of course not. 
Um, so I'm, this is basically word for word on Bruce Schneier, uh, his, his blog, his security blog, which is incredible. You should check that out. Uh, but basically, all of my thoughts around this come from here. Uh, and and I, I agree with everything Bruce says here. I don't agree with him on everything, but this knocked it out of the park. Um, so let's say that your phone says, okay, well, we detected somebody near you within this range for this amount of time. Um, doesn't necessarily mean you've been exposed, let alone infected. We'll get to that part in a bit, but it doesn't necessarily mean you've been exposed. If I'm sitting in a room of my apartment and somebody else, like a neighbor downstairs, is also sitting in their apartment, well, I don't know. Is that close enough? Could be. What if you what if you went to a pharmacy and you're you know talking to a person through that little speaker thing and there's just glass between you and them sure you got within six feet of a person but not like six feet of transmissible distance there's plexiglass in front of you man um so you know does that help well not really that's that's a whole lot of false positives um and you know these things just aren't accurate enough to cover everything so of course you're gonna miss some stuff uh and on top of that uh, we we now have you know information about um, surface transmission, right? So if somebody like coughs or, or sneezes or something, spreads germs all over a table or a surface or a doorknob, or they you know sneeze into their hands and open a door or you know grab railing somewhere, well, the the Bluetooth app won't tell you that. Oh, hey, this door handle is infected. It's not giving off the Bluetooth signals. It has no idea where that person is, right? Because they're they're long gone at this point. Uh, and then all of a sudden you get infected through that vector. And this app has no way of tying those things together because it doesn't know about the world. It just knows about Bluetooth signals that it is sending and receiving. I mean, is there is having the false positives better than no positives? I I would argue that it actually is worse having these things in place is going to be worse because not only are you going to get a small subset of the population installing these things but you could have two different effects which are both pretty bad uh so the first effect is that this thing shows you a whole lot of false positives because contact does not necessarily mean infection right um what what bruce points out is he said yeah you know covid has an infection vector of less than 100 percent he doesn't know what that is. He's not a healthcare expert. Neither am I. Uh, you know, we are not healthcare experts on the show, but we do know that not everyone who gets in contact with this thing gets infected by it. And even if you are infected by it, doesn't mean you present with symptoms. So, um, what this can do is it can drive more people to go to the healthcare system, which are already pretty pretty on the ropes, right? In certain places in the country, they are absolutely overloaded and, and struggling to keep up. We've done a lot by flattening the curve, by social distancing, by shutting down the world's economy. Um, but we could very easily hit a situation where we ramp back up harder and faster than before. Um, and that's what we want to try to avoid. So this can drive otherwise healthy people into an environment where it is dangerous, where there are increased chances of infection just to go get a test where they may not need one. Um, so that that would be an issue. Uh, the, of course, the giant overarching problem is the lack of testing. And I'm specifically speaking about the United States here because it is just a mess. And I, I know we try not to get political here on the show, but it, there's no denying that it's absolutely a mess compared to most other places in the world. Um, Bruce also points out, well, the other effect, I forgot the, the other effect. Uh, the other effect is that this could embolden people, right? So end-to-end -end encrypted, we don't even think about the stuff we're sending each other anymore because that's great. We don't have to. Nobody is reading our messages and nobody can. It is bulletproof mathematical cryptography. It is wonderful. Um, and so we, we get a little bit careless with the stuff we send because who's going to know? Me and the person I'm sending it to and you know, if they take a screenshot of it, that's about it. Uh, but with these contact tracing apps, you'll you'll look on the app, green light, cool. I'm good, man. I'm going to go out and party because why not? I'm allowed or I'm going to go over to a friend's house. And it doesn't take into the account the fact that you could have been infected by somebody standing next to you. 
you know, they might not have had the app. Their app could have been there. They could have been infected without knowing it. You know, there's a whole lot of failure scenarios to this thing. And it can embolden people to go out and do things that they wouldn't do if they were being careful. Uh, and that's that's the other dangerous part to this. And we haven't even covered false negatives. I mean, this is like the the app. I think it's called the Abbott test where it was testing the antibodies where that's the one that the 15 minute one where people are taking it every day, every couple of days, the important people. And I think it was like a 30% false negative, uh, false positive rate or false negative rate. It was one of them. And it was causing people to do things that they, like you said, that they shouldn't be doing just because of that. So, so I, so yes, false negatives and false positives are a problem. And I, I think that the human nature, like you said, of uh, of doing of doing bad things are going to come from it. I'm looking at it as if if I'm in a school and I'm teaching and everyone's being very responsible. But as we've seen, you just look at the pictures; not everyone is responsible, and that scares me. Yeah, the the false negatives is also an issue, right? Because let's say that um, you know, of, of course. Apps have bugs, right? There, there could be issues in location systems and GPS tracking and proximity. Everybody knows the spots in, in their neighborhood or home or office where the signals are just bad. I know where I can walk to a corner of a building that I frequent and the GPS thinks I'm in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Like it is ridiculously bad in this one little spot. Those spots exist everywhere. Unfortunately, you know, these apps are not going to be perfect. So what you could have is a situation where it puts you somewhere a little too close to another person, even though you're not in reality too close. And it says, hey, you probably have this thing or, hey, you were in contact with somebody with this disease. OK, but not necessarily. And uh, it also, you know, will fail to catch people who, uh, you know, are infected but present asymptomatically, right? If they haven't gotten a test and they're walking around with this app with a green light that says, you're good, bro, but they have the thing, they're actively transmitting the disease, but they're asymptomatic, it doesn't help anyone. Now you've emboldened the person with the green light on their phone and the other person with the green light on their phone to go hang out, and that just spreads the chain of infection even further. Uh, these apps are... I, I understand why it happens. People are trying their best. They're trying to help out. They're, they're trying to do anything they can. And tech people like me, I, I even went through this scenario myself. What can I do to help? What can I do, technologically speaking, whether it's software, an app, a service, a website, a podcast, something, what can I do to help? And honestly, the thing, the, the uncomfortable tru truth to the matter is that the thing we can do to help out the most sit inside binge some netflix stop going over to to people's houses you know don't don't throw parties don't go to protests just you know come on man avatar the last airbender just hit netflix have you seen it it's wonderful you should go watch it and you can watch it with your kids it's great uh but unfortunately we're not really in a position where we can all help unless you're you know a healthcare worker or a government representative it, it's it's the Again, I'm looking at it from, from, I, I want to say that I'm a rational human being. I want to say that, that I'm going to stay inside unless I have to go out. But would the app be good in a sense that all these people are rational human beings and are only going to go out and they're going to stay the course and we're going to try and flatten the curve and wear our face masks. And oh, by the way, this person, we're both green, but we're going to be careful by being green versus, oh, you're red, but we're not going to shame you because you're, it, it's one of those, you're assuming this. But then then I go back to, um, we we're talking about this for education. How are we going to get kids back in school and everyone has to wear a mask? Well, if we can't get people wearing masks into Walmart to keep them from getting infected, how are we going to get them to install it or to jailbreak it so they're green? That's that's the other thing I can think of. Is there a way with the poorly designed app to, to fake it green? Or just put a big green dot on you. Just figure it out and just screenshot it as your lock screen. I mean, I mean, just go from there and 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 
and do that. And it's hard for me to believe that. But then I go on the news, I, I go watch the news, and that's all I see. I see people saying, eh, whatever, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have a COVID-19 party, or I'm going to protest. And and if I get sick, if I get everyone sick, I don't really care. And th- that bothers me. It's it's so so I want I want an app like this to be very, very good. I want this to work. I want this to be in cryptically uh cryptography cryptographically sound and 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 a way that we can trace other things not just uh COVID-19 but then I look at it as I think you're right where not everyone's going to download it the people that should be downloading it are not and the people who are going to have super risky behaviors are going to delete it so they can continue their super risky behavior yeah so it's unfortunate because I I love technology. The whole reason I got into this field is because I, I fell in love with computers at a very, very young age. Um, but this is not a problem where necessarily technology and, and software developers and you know app devs and people who do this sort of work where we're really going to be very effective. Uh, and and the, the biggest example that I have of this is that if you think that people are going to do the right thing, use the platform in the right way as and not abuse the platform. I've got Twitter stock to sell you. And you're right. And again, we, we want to hope that everyone's correct on this, but I, I think, I think you're changing my view and that, that problems of people not doing it are going to follow. So it's everyone wants to go to the beach. Everyone wants to go eat out. Look, I I am the first one who can't wait till I can get my late night apps at, at on Friday nights at the restaurant. Like I am the first one there as soon as Dude, we can. That is the thing I'm missing the most. I so where I live, there's there's a, a very generic sports bar near me, and I love it so much. I go there. I watch a little bit of hockey. I have a fresh beer. I have a, a hot burger in front of me with some onion rings. Like that is the only thing I, I just desperately need right now is I need to go to this restaurant, sit down, watch some sports that I'm not really interested in anyway, and drink a beer. Look, I, we have a cruise booked in uh, November, election week, and I desperately want to go on it. And it's it's if i have to cancel i'll i will be upset and i am not like i'm gonna stay here until there's zero cases i'm i know that i have to work and do all this but i i'm looking for that's what's gonna happen as soon as everything opens up disney is gonna be packed all these places are gonna be packed and look let's just all get these cases down to as low as we can and and Dare I say, trust trust the government to be following the science. I mean, I hate to say that, but but if you're in a state where where you think your governor is doing a good job, they're 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 listening to people. Let them continue to listen to people, and you may not like it. You may not be able to do this, but I'm from New Jersey. The governor seems to be doing the right thing. We don't need to protest him. Same in New York. Uh, same along the East Coast. But let's let's try and and was break the curve or flatten the curve to the point that we're that everyone's safe and we can reopen yeah and if you are in a position where uh you're luckily uh, lucky enough to work from home i am um yeah just just to be fully transparent but if you are lucky enough to continue working this time and you don't have to go out right you can get groceries delivered you can do all the stuff to keep away from people do it um this is this is like one of the only times in history when being a lazy couch potato is beneficial for humanity as a whole. And I, I can't tell you how proud I am to sit on my couch in my pajamas and watch Avatar The Last Airbender for like the ninth time this week because it is just that good. So do your part. Binge some Netflix if and you're able. If, look, and if you have kids, my kids are desperate to play with friends. They are, they want, I mean, my son is watching this tablet five, six, seven hours a day doing whatever the teachers give him, but still he's doing it. He desperately wants to go outside and run around and be a kid and everything else. And we can't let him do it. He's not learning to ride a bicycle. He's not, he's not outside kicking the soccer ball. We had to cancel swimming and soccer and we want to look, the kids want school to start up. 
So, and the parents were, we're crazy here. We just want them to go outside for an hour and leave us alone. So if it's going to take another two weeks, if it's going to take an, if it's, if I know that whatever we're doing means school's going to open up in September, let's do it. Let's get it done. Let's, let's just do it. Anyway, we're, we didn't even get to our second topic about zoom <laughs> anyway, next week, I guess that's good. So yep. anyway, I didn't realize how many people loved our office 365 or our Microsoft 365 episode. If you didn't listen to it, you said, Oh, this no people have actually pulled us aside and said, wow, we really, really like it. So, so uh, I, I will say that again. Anyway, we are out of time. So we will say bye everybody. And hopefully we will see you next week. See you, everyone. Okay. All right, I've stopped. We're still live. Let me shut that down.